All right, with a quick Google search, you will be met with endless pages of LUTs and presets and plugins that all promise to get you the film look. But one that stands out above the others is Dehancer. This is an advanced film emulation plugin that includes filmic effects like halation, film grain, and plenty of others, as well as profiles for different cameras so that you can match your colors to that of the original film stock. And so in this review, I want to know, is Dehancer really worth the hype? Now, full disclosure, Dehancer did send me their software for review, however, they have not paid me or told me what to say. And at the end of the video, I'll be giving you guys a promo code so you can get 10% off of Dehancer if you decide to purchase it, and I'll be making a 10% commission based on your purchase at no extra cost to you. In fact, you're getting it for a discount. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into Dehancer and see if this thing is actually worth it. All right, so first we're gonna see how Dehancer works in DaVinci Resolve, and then we'll look at Affinity Photo. So jumping into DaVinci Resolve, we know that Dehancer is an OFX plugin, so it's gonna be here in our effects. If we just scroll down to the very bottom, we have Film Emulation, and then we can drag Dehancer Pro onto our footage. All right, so I am using Dehancer Pro Beta, so there might be some little nicks and glitches here and there, but I haven't noticed anything, and I'm pretty comfortable using Dehancer. All right, so first up we have our color space conversion right here, similar to the color space transform in DaVinci Resolve, but gives you a few different options here. So we've got our source, we can select our different cameras. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose, choose camera. And then vendor, I'm gonna go ahead and select Canon camera. It automatically sets it to the C200 since that's the first one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select, let's go M50. Now this was shot on the Canon 80D, but because it's the same color profile, I feel fairly comfortable using the M50 neutral picture style option on here. All right, and so moving on to Film Developer, let's open this up and press Enable. Then we can go ahead and try messing around with our contrast boost and things like that. I think for this, I might want to decrease some of that contrast just to bring out those shadows a little bit more. And then for our gamma correction, we can shift this and you'll see this does affect the exposure a little bit, but it does a bit more than that. This is really dynamically affecting some of the brightness and luminance in our image. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up and then color separation, this is default at 100. Let's bring this down to zero and see what this is doing. I'm not seeing a huge difference right now, but I'm sure we'll notice it at some point. And then color boost, we could go ahead and increase that. Okay, that is looking good. And then let's come down and select our film stock. First we have Kodak Vision 3 250D selected. Turn this off, back on. You can see this is really doing a lot to our footage. If we turn this off the entire node, turn it back on, this is really getting us so close to the film look without really having to do much. Just set your camera settings and maybe mess with the film developer settings and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other film stocks. I really like Portrait 800. The colors you get from this film stock are just amazing. So that looks pretty good. Let's also try Kodak Supra. I like that. Pro image. That's looking good too. I like those more teal highlights in the sky there. Uh, let's try 160 VC. And then I'll just go ahead and run through a few more film profiles here just to see which ones I like. And so you can see you've just got a lot of options to choose from, all kinds of film profiles, matching Kodak and Fuji and a bunch of other ones. So I really recommend checking these out and they all seem super, super high quality. I've tested quite a few of them and I can firmly state that these actually replicate authentic film color. They look really, really good. And so moving on into our next menu here, we have film compression. Let's go ahead and press enable and then see how this impacts our image with impact. Okay, so you can see we're compressing some of those luminance and the highlights. If we bring this all the way out, you can see that kind of digital highlight roll off, but then if we make this go more to the right, then we're softening that roll off a little bit, and I like that a lot better. You can even see along her shoulder here and in her hair, as we drag our compression to the right, we're really recovering some of that information while maintaining a good white point. And then color density, I think I'm gonna drag that down a little bit, something like that. And then print. Now this is interesting because the print option is talking about what film stock do we want this to 
to emulate in terms of print film. We've looked at the negative film, but now we're looking at the print film. And a lot of the common ones are from Fuji and Kodak. So the one that a lot of big movies today use is Kodak 2383. So if we go ahead and select that, you can see we get this nice natural teal and orange look that looks just like the big blockbuster movies we see today. Checking out the Fuji one, I like that as well, but I think I'm gonna stick with the Kodak. Now let's play around with our target white and our exposure. I think I'm gonna bring my target white to the left just to warm that up a little bit. And then for our exposure, I'm gonna go ahead and also increase that maybe decrease some of that contrast, maybe bring that exposure back down just like that because I don't want to crush my shadows too much. I just want them to be nice and dark and deep without being crunchy. Then color density, we can increase this or decrease it. I'm going to go ahead and increase it quite a bit. That way we get that nice dense blue in the sky so that we're not oversaturating our colors, but we're just adding a lot more density and pushing those colors together. Now, like I said, there are a ton of features in this plugin, but a couple more of the ones that I really like include the film grain and the halation. So we've got film grain enabled by default, and I like this setting, 35 millimeter ISO 250. This looks really good. I might decrease this just a little bit. Somewhere around 23 looks pretty good. And then we're also gonna enable halation. Now, this really mimics the light passing through the film, and there's a lot of chemistry that happens right there, but I really like the way Dehancer emulates this effect. And then scrolling down, we've also got overscan. We've seen this a lot in social media today. Enable that, and it gives like those film mats on the side and on the top of the image there. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that since I don't really need it, and then I'll enable a little bit of the vignette there. And boom, this looks so, so good. We barely had to do anything to this footage and already it's already color graded and it looks amazing. Now, after just a few minutes of grading, we've already got a solid cinematic look and I wanna see if we can apply this to the next clip to see how well these adjustments translate between clips. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy my node here, come to the next clip and paste it. That's pretty solid. When a grade can copy between clips easily without distorting, you know you have a solid color grade. All right, so now I'm gonna put a few more clips on screen so that you can see the Dehancer plugin and how it really impacts the colors in your videos. And honestly, this looks really, really, really good. I'm already looking at how I'm gonna use Dehancer and really integrate it into my workflow since this makes the color grading process so much easier. All right, so now that we've graded a bunch of clips in DaVinci Resolve, let's go ahead and look at how Dehancer works for photos using Affinity Photo. All right, so to start this off, let's look at this image that was shot on a phone. So a compressed codec that was used on this image, and we're gonna go ahead, come to Filters, Plugins, Dehancer, Dehancer Film. All right, so looking through the different film stocks, the one that I've settled on is again, the Kodak Vision 3 250D. I love this profile. Let's come over to the right where we have all of our different settings where we can adjust our image. First, we've got our source, right? We've got our exposure compensation, things like that. This is actually a fairly natural exposure compensation algorithm that it's using, a lot more natural than some of the others that I've seen from other software and plugins. And then we've got our temp and tint controls, defringe, all of that. And then let's go ahead and check on this box for film developer. And then let's go get some color boost going in there. And then let's come down to film compression. And we can go ahead and take our white point and try to smoothen that up a little bit and then increase some of that color density. Under print, I'm gonna go ahead and select Kodak 2383 film print. And boom, I love the colors that this thing gives. Let's go ahead and add some more color density there, some tonal contrast, bump that up a little bit. All right, add some tonal contrast. And already, this is looking so good. Let's go ahead and come down to our grain. We've got that set the way I like. Add some halation, some bloom, and then a nice little vignette. And boom, I love how this is looking. Let's go ahead and look at the before and after. So before, after, so quick, so easy, just with a couple little adjustments. Press OK, wait for it, and boom, you've got your edited image and it looks so good straight in Affinity Photo. Now this is also compatible with Photoshop, Capture One, Lightroom, all the big editors, and you can use this plugin in those. Now this next image is shot by my good buddy Derek, an excellent photographer, shout out to Derek. I'll leave a link to his Instagram profile below. And right here, we're gonna go ahead and apply Dehancer again. You already know where we're going. Filters, plugins, Dehancer, and boom, we've got Dehancer loaded up right here. 
Now this is also applying the same settings that we were using last time. And so in this case, I might wanna choose a different film negative or film print. So let's come down to our film print and then let's go ahead and select our Fuji option right here. See if that changes the color in the way that we like. Okay, that's looking better. And then let's bring up our exposure because I know this shot is a little dark. So let's go ahead and increase our exposure compensation. Nothing too crazy. Somewhere right around there is looking pretty good. And then let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other Kodak options for our film negative. And so the film profile that I've landed on for this one is Kodak Portrait 160 VC. And boom, here we are. It looks so good. Let's turn off our preview, turn it back on. You can really see the difference that this made. This really does emulate the colors of film. All right, so here are a few more photos before and afters using Dehancer. And honestly, I'm really, really loving the results. Dehancer also has an iPhone app that allows you to use the same scientifically researched film emulation profiles on both your photos and your videos. And with the video tools, you get some additional features like gate weave and film breath to make your videos look even more authentic. Here's a couple of before and after photos. All right, so now that we're more familiar with Dehancer and its features and effects and how you can use it to instantly improve your videos and photos, let's go ahead and talk about the cost. A lifetime license to Dehancer for photo editors like Capture One and Lightroom and Photoshop is gonna run you 199 USD and there's some subscription options as well, which for everything you're getting for this plugin, I think is totally worth it. Now for video editing platforms, if you wanna get Dehancer Pro, whether you're using Premiere Pro, Final Cut, or DaVinci Resolve, as of recording this video, the plugin costs $449 USD. Now there is a light version of Dehancer, which costs $199 USD and includes the core essential functions of Dehancer. All right, so now in my opinion, I would say Dehancer is an amazing plugin. For the price, I feel like it's kind of a steep price. So Dehancer, if you can, I would recommend lowering that price tag a little bit. But you guys, honestly, you will be speeding up your workflow with Dehancer. And so I think that getting this plugin is definitely worth it. All right, so if you guys wanna get your copy of Dehancer, use this promo code at checkout to get 10% off. And in return, I'll be making a 10% commission. It's honestly one of the best ways to support this channel. I'll go ahead and link their software below. If you guys have any other questions, go ahead and let me know if you wanna join any of my courses. Also, link below. I will see you guys in the next video.